All right, guys, you are looking at one of only three prototypes that Bowley Lock Company has released into the wild. Um, there were three of them. The first one went to Lockman 28. It was the aluminum bodied version. All the dimensions and everything that I'm getting ready to talk about are exactly the same, except his is called the lightweight version, so aluminum body. The second one, and probably the most expensive one, went to Lock Picking Lawyer. I'll be talking more about that one uh, in just a minute, but it's a brass body lock, exactly the same as this one. This is known as the high security version of it. This is a three pounds, two ounces, or which is 1.42 kilograms of 17-4 stainless steel, tougher than woodpecker lips. This thing is just absolutely massive. Sells for $210 Canadian, which is $163 US at today's exchange rate. It's kind of hard to imagine how massive this thing is just on the camera, so I'm gonna give you something to compare it to. This is a Lockwood, which is identical in size to the American 700. And you can see this American 700, considered by itself to be a pretty high security lock, it's like one third of the size and one third of the weight. So just, this thing is massive. Um, for those of you who don't have a 700, this is a number three. And this, let me set it right there, it looks like a tiny little suitcase lock compared to this, this 543. Just absolutely massive. All right, this is a prototype. As I said, this is the only stainless steel high security one in the wild. There will never be another one. So I think I should point out some of the differences between what you find in a prototype and what, you, what we're gonna find in the production. First of all, they wanted to get this out the door. So while the internals and finish and everything are the same, the shackle is not a hardened shackle. It's a soft metal shackle. So I just thought that would be important to point out. I don't know if the new one is going to change the weight or the knot. Um, on the side of this prototype, when you insert those ball bearings in the locking mechanism, you actually have to drill all the way through this lock, put everything in, and then put these stainless steel caps in. They just press these in there. On the production model, they're going to put them in first, then they're going to machine the side of this so that they're going to be invisible. There's a third thing, and um, it's the locking, uh, the key itself. The key itself, um, the original Bowley, this is again a prototype key. The original Bowley is going to have their logo, it's going to have their name engraved onto it. This one, of course, is kind of rough looking, and that's because it is a prototype to go with this lock. Let's talk a little bit about this. There's a couple of advantages to going last. Um, my lock got caught in customs at the Canadian border for about a week. You might think that's a downer. It kind of is. I like to be first to review stuff, but the advantage is the other guys did all the hard work. Um, I'm not going to have to gut this. And here's why. The lock picking lawyer, he's a much better gutter than I am. He's much more gifted at disassembly and describing how all the components interact with each other. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check down there in the description. I'm going to put his link. Go check it out. He did a super, super job. The other advantage to going last is that just recently a guy named Chris Ahrens has demonstrated a working theory about how to pick the original Bowley lock. I remember the original Bowley lock, it's a five pinner. And his working theory says that he has to insert one, basically one pick, one tool for each of the five pins and then a tensioner. So a total of six tools are required for a, for a, uh, to pick a bolt, the original Bowley mortar cylinder. Now on Chris's lock, it is a working theory and he's a very gifted picker and very imaginative to come up with a technique. But fortunately for him, his lock only had three of the pins that were non-zero bitted. Two of them were zero bitted, which means he didn't have to pick them. Now let's talk about this one. That's where this is kind of a build up. The original Boldy Keyway looked like that with only one wing. This one has a little odd, it's got two wings. And that's because the new key is called a dual prong. Now if you look closely at this, you see the original five pins from the original Boldy lock right there but now they've built another wing on this side with another four pins. A total of nine pins, it's an opposing lock. So I don't know if Bowley was anticipating or if they knew that Chris Ahrens was working on it, was very close to figuring out how to pick it, or if they just got lucky and decided to say, you know, we're gonna make our product better before somebody figures out how to whip us. Regardless, I can't see that because in order to pick this, you have to put five tools on one side, four tools on the other side, and then figure out some way to tension it. A total of 10 tools have to fit in this little keyway. Whoever does that is gonna be a, 
a hundred times better picker than I ever. I like, can't wait to see it happen. Anyway, let's get back to this dual prong. Well, obviously we got a five pin lock on and a four pin lock and they're opposing. The, the key can't go in either way. So how do they do that? Well, what they've done is modified the keyway and made this side just a little bit just a hair wider than that one. So if you try to put the key in the wrong way, it won't let you. Just flip it over and slide it in there. Once we get it in, you have to rotate it basically 45 degrees. And then you notice it's not all the way in. There's a little gap there. Then you push it in and that engages the tensioner. Once that's done, then you can rotate it 90 degrees and that unlocks it, and then you can completely remove the shackle. Now, it looks like it's key retaining, and we're lucky because this gives us a chance to take a look. It is not key retaining. We can now rotate that back 90 degrees to where it's actually in the locked position, or we can even completely unlock it, remove the key. If the shackle were in there, this would be locked, and this gives us a chance to look down in there and see what is going on. And you can actually see, if I get my light to work, you can see the ball bearing sticking out on both sides and it's solid lock so there's a piece of metal stuck between those two we are not going to be able to shim this thing in a lifetime so just a I don't know who came up with this these Boldy brothers were just absolutely awesome in this design very creative and I just can't see that this thing going to be picked anytime soon all right there's only three of these I can't imagine how incredibly valuable these are going to be at some point there's a lot of collectors out there that would probably give their pinky to own this. I don't need it. Um, this is what's going to make my video different. I'm going to give this one away. And the reason I don't need it is because I have a new guard cat. And he's fully armed. He's still going through training. And, yeah, there's some learning curve going on. But I just don't need this because he's pretty aggressive and doing a good job of securing a lock lab. I'm going to give this away. So normally on Fridays, um, I give away a Tuxedo Royale. This coming Friday, I'm not going to give away a Tuxedo Royale. I'm going to give away this 543 prototype. If you're a collector, this is the only chance you will ever have to get one of these. I just, there's only one prototype, stainless steel high security, and this is it. You will have a one-of-a-kind item with the prototype key. Anyway, fellas, I appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal. Bally Brothers, thank you, sirs, for sending in this lock. I appreciate your chance to take a look at it, and I wish I could pick it, but I just don't see it in the cards. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, I'm trying to avoid hundreds of people emailing me asking how to enter this giveaway. It is a pretty cool giveaway, so I thought I'd just do an outro and show you how to do it. This is Lock Lab's homepage. Most of you guys have seen it already, but for those of you newbies out there, if you take a look, there's a lot of really cool stuff here for you to go through. If you'd like to donate to support the Lock Lab, in particular help subsidize postage to give away stuff, there is the donate button, that green one. Along the right side here are the companies that generously donate a lot of free stuff to us to give away to you. So be nice to them and maybe they'll be nice to us. These are the bars that you need to click to get to register for the giveaways. Uh, on the weekend giveaway, I usually do a review, and at the end of the review, I give away and say, click the purple button, and there it is. There's a purple button. On Mondays, I generally give away a Mad Bob's uh, tactical entry kit. That may change in the future, but that's what I have a bunch of right now. On Wednesdays, I usually give away a uh, Sparrow's tuxedo kit. Great beginner and intermediate kit, so that's what I give away there. And normally Fridays, I give away the Sparrow's tuxedo royale kit. This is Friday the 13th. It's just a little bit different. So this is the button you're looking for. You click on Friday and it'll take you to the registration page. Um, we call it the Fan Appreciation Free Giveaway. Today, April 13th, which is a Friday. I didn't plan it that way. You have the Prototype Valley 543. Going to be giving it away. In order to register, very easy. Enter in an email here. It can be a one-time throwaway giveaway. I really don't care. I just need some way to contact you if you are the winner. So that's how I do it. I'll drop you an email. And here you put in a username. A lot of guys use their user, their YouTube ID. You can put any name in there that you want, and that's what I will post on the U1 page, unless it's a nasty word or something that I won't. Anyway, fellas, very easy, easy to register for this prototype. It's a one-of-a-kind. Good luck, despite the Friday the 13th thing. Sorry about that. Thanks, guys.